Let's turn our Bibles to 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. We're going to look at verses 1 through 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. The title of the message is, Be Bold in Our God. Be Bold in Our God. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. The Bible says, For yourselves, brethren, know our entrance in unto you, that it was not in vain. But even after that we had suffered before, and were shamefully entreated, as ye know, at Philippi, we were bold in our God to speak unto you the gospel of God with much contention. For our exhortation was not of deceit, nor of uncleanness, nor in guile. But as we were a lot of God to be put in trust with the gospel, even so we speak, not as pleasing man, but God, which trieth our hearts. For neither at any time use we flattering words, as ye know, nor a cloak of covetousness. God is witness. Brother Caleb, can you please pray for the message? Amen. Amen. Be bold in our God. What is boldness? What is being bold? You know, sometimes it is interchangeable with courage, courageous. So according to the dictionary, it says, not hesitating or fearful in the actual or possible danger. Webster's dictionary says, fearless before danger. So when you, when you talk about being bold, you probably have some idea who are bold people. You sometimes think about soldiers. I mean, soldiers are bold. Right. You know, they're courageous. They're in the battle. They're facing danger all the time. I mean, we have war going on in Ukraine. I mean, they could die at any moment, but they have boldness to fight. So they're not hesitating or fearful in the actual or possible danger. To them, they're actually in actual danger. Sometimes as Christians, you're on the second part. You're not hesitating or fearful in the possible danger that's awaiting. How many of you are fearless before danger? You know, a lot of times, you know, worldly sense of being bold is what? You know, doing some crazy stunts, right? You know, do some crazy stuff in front of a bunch of people. They think, wow, that person is bold. You know, even in classroom, right? When a teacher asks a question, someone who speaks up, you think, oh man, that person is bold. You know? I mean, some cultures, you don't really speak at all, right? <laughs> you just study, get good grades, and that's it. But, you know, when someone who's going through school and never have spoken up in class, and when they see, like, you know, certain type of folks, you know, always speaking up in class, right? They're like, oh, man, that person has some courage. That person has boldness. And you see, as you're growing up, when boldness is involved in your life. When you do something wrong, you have to be bold, right? I mean, kids, if they break something, when parents are away at work and their parents come home, they're like, where's my favorite plate? Where's my favorite cup? And then they see the remnants of glasses on the floor. They're like, what happened? Right? In the face of danger, 
I mean, think about it. You're a young child. You just broke a glass in a favorite cup of your parents. And then you know what's coming. You got to get lectured, and you might be spanked as well. But the bold child will courageously say, quote, unquote, you know, I did it. I don't know how many of you guys were like that when you were growing up, right? And, uh, because you might remember those things that happened in your childhood where you did something wrong. A lot of times, you know, as human beings, we don't really remember all the good stuff. But we do remember when something really bad happened in our life. I mean, even, you might have been three. You might have been four. I mean, I, I've seen people, when they were two, they still remember because it was traumatic. So I'm sure you do remember certain things. And many times, you know, when we were growing up, you and I, we, were not, we weren't bold. That's not like our character. But as a Christian, after you got saved, you have to be bold. Because you're in a battle. You're in a constant battle. You're in a constant spiritual battle. If you're not bold, then what's going to happen? You're going to struggle always, and you're going to lose. Right. You're going to be a... You're going to be on the losing side in the battle all the time. Can you imagine? You go to a war as a country, and then you lose all the time. The morale is going to be low, right? Yes. People are disappointed, dejected. And a lot of times, they're under different regimes rule. Many Christians today, since they're not bold, what happens? They lose the battle, and they're under different regime. They should be under the guidance. They should be under regime of God. Amen. However, since you, you're not bold, you lost that boldness, yes. you're under different regime. You always have to remember, when you and I, when we're not bold in our God, not bold in ourselves, right? You know, some of us could go out there and then, you know, make a fool out of self. Yes. I mean, we could be... You see it in social media, right? Yeah. During a sporting event, someone runs out to the field. You know? And then they think that they get the 15 minutes of fame. Yeah. And then you know, some people are cheering, right? Because deep inside, they're like, I wanted to run to the field. You know? <laughs> I want to be taken down by you know, you know, eight you know, big guys. Right? And then say hi on TV. You know? get a little misdemeanor or something and just get out. And then that'll be my plaque. You know? And then you talk about it at work, like this is the you know, courageous, I mean, courageous thing that you've ever done in your life. You know? And then you want people to give you accolade, right? Wow, you did that, right? You know? But we're not talking about that kind of boldness, right? We're not talking about like, you know, someone who like, had the courage to you know, ask a boy or girl out. Right? We're not talking about that kind of courage. Oh, man, you're so brave, you know? You opened your mouth and talked to that girl or talked to that boy, you know? I mean, like, you know, our church, right? You know, our policy, right? You know, you, when you become of age, that's when you do it. Now, I don't want to see eight-year-old boy here, you know, asking a, you know, eight-year-old girl, hey, you want to go out with me? And then your parents goes, man, my child is very brave. Oh, my child is very bold. No, you should, you should lecture your child. You, know? you should have been thinking about dating at that age, right? So human concept of boldness is not the boldness that God talks about. All the boldness that you see in the word of God is in our God. You are bold in our God because you're not dependent upon yourself. You're dependent on someone else, you know, like who's got your back? Amen. Isn't, it, isn't it always, you know, cute thing to see when a little child, you know, is so, so bold and courageous because their parents are like standing behind them, right? I, because my daddy is behind me, because my mom is behind me, I got nothing to worry. You know, I'm just going to say it, right? I mean, during street preaching, our young kids will just do it because they see that their parents are doing it. Oh, you know, I could rely on my parents. 
you know, I'm going to street preach as well. And then that kind of boldness is what you and I need. Yeah. Because you and I, we're a coward being. Yes, we are. Why? Because if you say you're not cowards, have you preached every time you needed to preach? Have you passed out gospel every time you needed to pass out gospel, gospel track? Have, have you, I mean, witnessed every time you needed to witness? You didn't. Because something was holding you back. Yes. That's called you being a coward. Amen. That's called you not being bold in our God. Say you go to a gas station. You're pumping gas. Depends on the, you know, speed of the gas pump. You're going to be there for a few minutes. You could just stand there, lollygag, look at your phone, you know, pretend that there's nobody around you, right? But there are people around you. I mean, because that's like everyday event that happens to you and I. That's an example. Yeah. So when you're at a gas station, you know, unless they tell you to stop doing it, I mean, you could give a track to somebody, right? I mean, <laughs> I remember me and you know, my brother, you know, we were traveling somewhere. We stopped by a gas station, but we passed out tracks. And the guy runs out and goes, hey, don't do it. You know? My boss said, don't do it. You know? It doesn't happen overnight. You know, that was the gas station I've been going for years and years. And then they, they saw it. And another thing, who goes to drive through here? Who is fast food? I mean, college kids, you guys eat fast food all the time, right? So you go drive through. I mean, as long as they say don't do it, you could give them a track. Yes. It's not that hard to do. But it's going to be hard to do if you're just thinking about yourself. Right. You're like, oh, what are they going to think about me? How are they going to think about me? Are they going to think I'm, you know, like a quote unquote, like, you know, Bible dumper, you know, Jesus freak, you know? I mean, the person probably you, you won't see for the rest of your life unless you go back there again. And then you're worried about what they're going to think about you. Right. You're worried about something that hasn't even happened. Yes. You know, I mean, that's what Christ, Christians are. You're like, you're worried about things that hasn't even happened. And that's the issue with you and me when it comes to being bold in our God. Yes. You're like, man, that guy's too big. <laughs> like, he got so many tattoos, you know. I saw him get off that motorcycle. Uh, is that a Mongols or Hell's Angels jacket? Okay, okay, not him. Oh man, this guy. You know, he's a, he, he looks like he has a good countenance. He looks nice, you know. And then what do you do then? Do you go to the nice looking guy? And then you don't go to the big guy because you know, he's scary looking? Believe, believe it or not, a lot of times, they're the ones, nice looking, those guys are the ones who always reject you. Yes. Because they're full of self-righteousness. Amen. Like those hell's angels and mongols guys, they're the one who usually re receives it. Yes. You know, because they want to see it. Because their life needs it. Amen. So you can't be coward when it comes to picking people who to give the gospel out to. It's going to happen, brethren. And the Lord's going to give you opportunity after opportunity. Because you and I are in constant battle. And you're going to see different people throughout the week. Again, I said, even if you're a hermit, you never go out of the house, you still have social media. This day and age, you could reach out to many, many people. People who are bold in God, they know that they're in struggle. And they do it. You and I have to have that mindset. It, we're in a war, constant battle, constant struggle every single day. And I could be serving my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, or I could be serving that mighty devil, the wicked one, the father of lies. It depends on how bold I am that day. Aren't you so confident? Weren't you guys so confident on Friday? When you're street preaching, yes, you are bold in the Lord, man. You know, I remember those days, right? Someone has to stop you from preaching because you're so fired up. Someone has to stop you from preaching because we have other people waiting. You know, 
I mean, that's a, you know, that's, that's zealous, right? Yes, sir. You know, I don't want to put, you know, brother on the spot. He knows who he is. Man, he was preaching for like 25 minutes, you know, on the mic the other Friday. Like, because he's so fired up. He has love for the lost souls out there. Why? Because he has that boldness yes, in our God. If you don't have boldness in our God, then you cannot be in contention with lost people in the world. You cannot be in contention with people who reject King James Bible. You cannot be in contention with people who ridicule street preaching. You have to be bold. Then what are some of the reasons that you're not bold? It's fear. Fear of man instead of Christ. Yes. Fear of man instead of God. That's the one reason why you are not bold in our God. You think about ridicule that people will give you. I mean, many, many times you and I can be bold for the Lord, but because you fear ridicule of man, you don't do it. Lord gives you so many opportunity. I mean, I'm guilty many, many times. Holy Spirit pricks in your heart. Preach the gospel. Pass out my word. Witness to that person. And you know it's right because you're so burdened. Because you are all called to preach the word. Yes. You're called to evangelize. You're called to witness to lost souls out there. Whether you're walking your block one day, you know, for exercise, whether you're doing errands, or whether you're having fun somewhere, you always have duty as a Christian to preach the word. And that requires boldness in our God. But if you don't do that, if you fear man, then what's going to happen? You're not going to do anything. You're going to just walk by those people. And you're like, oh, maybe there will be another opportunity. Maybe next time. You know what next time brings? Another next time. Another next time. Another next time. As a human being, you know, if you can't do it today that you ought to do today, you're not going to do it tomorrow or the day after. But if you can't do it today, you have to do it today. That's why when it comes to being bold, the reason, number one reason, you know, Christians are not bold is that because they fear man. They fear ridicule. They fear rejection. You know, go back to our text verse, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 2. The Bible says, but even after that we have suffered before. So we're talking about Folks who have suffered before, I mean, they weren't just, you know, just cruising in their life. It's not like they just went to a vacation and came back, right? It's not like they were enjoying themselves. They're being persecuted, suffering for Lord Jesus Christ. But even after that, we had suffered before and were shamefully entreated. Think about it. Think about how Apostle Paul was treated. Think about all the disciples Believers were treated. As ye know, at Philippi, we were, we were bold in our God to speak unto you the gospel of God with much contention. I mean, it's a battle. We see it again. Either you fear God and you fight for God, or you're going to fear man, and you're going to be a coward and stray away from things of God. Man, I don't want to be like that. I mean, you shouldn't be like that. You don't want to be that person in an army who just stays back and don't do anything. Right. And a lot of times, those are the people who get killed first. We're on the winning side. I mean, isn't it funny when you hear these war stories? I mean, some people are so courageous. I mean, they're in the front line. And they're so gung-ho about going to the enemy territory and eliminating the enemies. Yes. I mean, they get hit by bullets, you know, bullets flying everywhere. But God gives them grace and they survive. 
Because life, who controls life? It's God. Amen. I mean, you could be hiding in a, you know, 100 meter concrete on the bottom, and God takes the air away. Yes. You know, if there's flooding, you know, not from the top, but from the bottom, you know, some well water breaks, and then you did. You, you died just like that. Yes. Then I'll rather, you know, doing something for God where God will, you know, either let me live or die. It's up to him. Yes. Then trying to be running away from him because I fear man. Right. And not sure about when am I going to die. Many of you guys are in that situation because you fear man. And not knowing that you could have this boldness in our God and our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, you live each day in fear and no peace. You're constantly worried about trial, persecution, all these difficulties that's going on on in your life, maybe, but you expect to come. I mean, sometimes people expect some things that now that will never come, right? I mean, you worry about tomorrow. Why would you worry about tomorrow? I mean, you have sufficient things to think about today. That's why sometimes when you're in 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 your pews, sitting down or listening, instead of, you know, getting as much as possible from preaching from the word of God, singing and praising, your mind is in something else tomorrow. Okay, tomorrow my work. I have to get up at six again. You know, I have to face my horrible boss, you know, horrible customers, horrible coworkers, or vice versa. Man, tomorrow man, I can't wait for work tomorrow. Woo! It's gonna be a good, good working day, you know. Yes. And then, but your mind is at something else. It's not a good thing, and it's not the right thing. Even if it's a good thing, that strays you away from current truth. I mean, when you're listening to preaching, do you think it's the right thing to think about, oh, yeah, you know, dispensationalism, all the stuff, genealogy, let me, you know, memorize all those things? I mean, you're doing, you're not doing the wrong thing, but you're not doing, you know, the right thing. Right. When you should be concentrating and being blessed. Yes. So you're not bold because of man, what man can do to you and what man brings to you. Like, you know, you see what the world is doing, right? They bring disease. They bring financial trouble, right? They bring all this, you know, persecution and sickness. Think about what you fear today because you have to reflect on it. I mean, you have to know what your problem is. What your problem has been all this time, right? I mean, sometimes you don't come out to church. Why not? Because you fear something. I mean, if you're, Ill, if you're sick, illness, yeah, right? Bugs are going around nowadays, you know. You don't want to be like, you know, I serve God and then, you know, spread disease to everybody. You, you have to be wise about it. But what is it? Oh, you're going to church again today? Man, once is enough. Sunday. Why well, you go on Wednesday? Now you go on a Friday as well? You know? I mean, that's already three times. I mean, your family might tell you. Your friends might tell you. Then what's your reaction? Oh, I don't want to lose my family. I don't want to lose my loved one. I don't want to lose my friends. So you know what? I already go Wednesday and Friday. So Sunday, no. Man, now you start playing these matching games. I'm like, okay, Sunday, I go. Friday, I'll rest. I'll meet with my friends. Wednesday, maybe. Depends on how my body feels. Do you guys always tell that yourself? Okay, it depends on how my body feels, I'll go. I mean, that's just an excuse. Yes. I mean, do you think you always compare yourself to the Lord? What if Lord did his way based on how his body felt, right? I mean, you and I wouldn't be here today. That's right. 
So whether your body feels like doing it or not or going or not, whether your friends will ridicule you or not, or detect, I mean, reject you or you know, say bye-bye to you forever. I mean, they're not even your friends in that case, yeah. right? You know, whether, whatever the circumstances are, you have to make sure you're fearing only God Amen. and not man. Are you doing that because you fear God? Because when you fear God, boldness comes just naturally. My actions are based on fearing God. I'm not going to go drink because I fear God. I'm not going to smoke because I fear God. I'm not going to hang around with those folks who's going to make me sin because I fear God. Amen. So I'm just not going to do it, or I'm going to do it because I fear God. You know? Oh, man. That person sitting by themselves at a park bench, you know, sitting there for the last 15 minutes while I was walking, and the Holy Spirit is convicting me to talk to that person. I don't care what he's going to say. I'm just going to go. Amen. Give him a track, and you start talking. Yes. But if you fear man because you, you're scared how he's going to react, then no one's ever going to get saved unless they come to a church. Yeah. Well, it's a public ministry, though. You've got to be out there, preach to every creature out there. I'm not saying that you have to be a you know, jerk about it, right? You start running up to them. Hey, you know, I have something to tell you, you know, in a mean matter, you know. Just only talk about, you know, hell, 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 you know. I mean, some people need to hear that. But your intention should be because you are bold in our God and you want to make sure that they hear the gospel. Don't you have this opportunity whenever you witness to people or talk to people? If you're bold in God, you always leave, at least try to leave with a Bible verse. They might be rejecting you. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it, right? But let me just leave you with one verse, you know, Hebrews 9, 27. It is appointed unto men once to die after this judgment. Just think about it. Have a great day, and you just go. I mean, there are ways to do it. Because word of God never comes back void. It is not your ability. It's not how well you persuade. None of it. If you start thinking about that, when you're talking to people about Lord Jesus Christ, oh, man, I'm a good persuader. You know, I have ability. You know, I could lead people really well. Uh -uh, Lord's not going to lead you. Lord's not going to use you. Lord uses people who just trust in him and uses his word. What else do you need, right? Everybody thinks they're smart. Everybody thinks that they know everything. I mean, everybody thinks that, you know, I know better than you. Don't try to lecture me. But when you talk about just the plain word of God, you know, for the wages of sin is dead, you know, like Revelation 21 8, but they're fearful and unbelieving. The fearful. Why is the fearful always the first one? Because people worry about death. People are fearful about their death, right? Those people are out there. They live in fear. That's why a lot of unsaved people, you know, they're not bold because they're afraid of death. But you have the good news to tell them. You have the good news to tell them, those who are fearful, where they're going after they die. You have the word of God to reach out to them. Yes. If you fear God, you're going to reach out to fearful people out there. You don't fear God, you're not going to reach out to fearful people out there. Simple like that. The guy might be seven feet tall, look like Goliath, right? But even him will fear death if yes. he's not saved. Then you have that boldness. Amen. Amen. Okay, what can men do unto you? They cannot do anything. I mean, devil cannot do anything, just like you saw in the book of Job, unless they get permission, unless he get permission from God. I mean, we believe in God who 
is omnipotent, who controls everything. I mean, devil has to go to him to ask if he could bring certain things in your life. Look at Job, right? We're believing that almighty God and you're not fearful of him, but you're fearful of man. Woo! And that's shame. Right. That is very shameful thing. Yes. Like, you know, I receive Christ as my Lord and Savior. And I say, you know, I love him, right? I say, just like, you know, Apostle Peter said, I'm going to die for him, right? But wow, you look at what has been happening in your life. Think about what you've been bold in and think about what you've been fearful of. Common thing again. I have to reiterate it because, you know, it's the same thing that's happening to everybody. Yes. There's no new thing under the sun. Everybody goes through the same thing, or someone else is going through the same thing. And always remember that there's someone else who's going through worse than you. There's always someone who's going through worse than you. Then, if you are going through any type of financial trouble, physical trouble, persecution, sickness, have you been fearful of all those things? If you don't have money in your bank account, are you fearful? If you have a relationship problems, are you fearful? Obviously, if you don't trust in the Lord who saved you from hell, who's the creator of the universe, if you can't trust him, you are going to be fearful. Then you have to start eliminating those fear. Okay? Finances, I do my best, Lord's going to provide. Physical trouble, Lord's going to give me grace and mercy to get through any physical trouble. Any persecution, Lord's going to give me grace and mercy to get through that as well. And any other persecution trials that comes along your way, you're not going to be fearful about it because you fear God and you're standing in front of God and God's got your back. I mean, why do we always forget when, uh, again, like beginning of, you know, message, little kid, when they have their hundred confidence in their parents, man, they can do a lot of things, right? If they learn that I need to say thank you, which etiquette that a lot of people don't have nowadays, especially young people, even though nobody else is saying thank you, they say thank you. Why? Because they know it's the right thing to do. They fear their parents, and they know that they got their back. Parents got their back. When you're trying to preach the word, you do know that Lord has your back, right? You're not doing it alone. So if they're rejecting you, they're rejecting the Lord. Yes. He's like, well, I mean, he's inside of you, obviously, for illustration's sake. I mean, can you imagine how big our God is? Do you realize how big our God is? Our brains cannot comprehend. And you're out there. You know, there's a person who needs the gospel, and then someone's behind you who's like, you know, who could just destroy anybody else in the whole world? I mean, bring like millions and billions at the same time. He would still destroy them. He's your back. Yes. And you can't even say, okay, here's a gospel track to you. I mean, are you saved? You know, you can't talk about salvation plan. You don't have that boldness. Because Why? Because you fear man and you haven't feared God. Because your perspective and the way you think is totally, totally out of line. That's why it is a good thing for you to just get on your knees and then think about many things in your life. Oh man, have I been fearful of things that I shouldn't have been? Am I fearful of man? And what man would do unto me? If I stand for the word of God, am I always worried about what other people would do to me? I mean, if Apostle Paul thought about what other people would do unto them every time he preached the gospel, 
I mean, he would have lost all his hair. I don't know, I mean, if he had hair or not, right? But, you know, <laughs> like you yourself, the same thing. You want to lose your hair? Always worry about what other people think about you. Right. right? What other man will do unto you when you preach the gospel to them? That's why in order to be bold, now, now we know why you know, you're not bold, because you fear man and you don't fear God. Yes. In order to be bold, obviously, you have to be holy, you know, keep thyself pure. Amen. You have to get right with the Lord. You got to confess your sins, have a clean relationship with the Lord. Yes. But what else? You have to read the book. Amen. You have to read the word of God. Yes. If you want to be bold, you need some energy. Right. You need that nutrient. You want an energy bar in your spiritual life? Here's the answer. Woo! Go to the book. Read the book. Yes. In the book of Acts 20, 32 says, And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up. Woo! Man, you get more bolder if you are, you're more built, right? Yes. Well, what do you think sometimes people exercise and work out? Because they want to build their self-esteem, self-confidence. You know, if my arm is like, you know, you know, 30 inches big, you know, wow. I think I'm going to get some respect from people, right? You know, if normal t-shirt doesn't fit me anymore, you know, if I have to have all my suits tailored because I'm so big, you know, maybe I'll have boldness, right? You know, if wearing tank top is the only option for me because I'm so big, you know, I'll, I'll be it. You know, that'll be it. And then you become bold. Why? They're built up. And, of course, you have more confidence, you know, when you exercise, when you eat well. You know, you feel confidence bodily, right? But spiritually speaking, you have to read the book. Yes. You have to build yourself up. I mean, you need to have that ammunition to be bold. I mean, you're, when you're in a battle in Ukraine, are you going to go out there, fight without the gun? Without your equipment? Not learning how to use the equipment? I mean, how, how many of you guys know how to shoot, like, assault rifle or M16? What if it's not just easy as just clicking that button? because there's a safety button somewhere, sometimes it gets jammed, then you have to learn. You have to build yourself up. And I, I mean, in a war, I think you have to walk a lot with a heavy, heavy duty equipment. So you gotta be in shape. That's why they wake up, they constantly train. Then as Christians, if you wanna be bold, you have to read the book and you have to build yourself up. You have to build yourself up. I mean, you can't be a you know, weakling in a battle. You have to get stronger and stronger. Then how do you do that? You have to read the book, and you have to speak the book. So since you've been reading it now, then you got to speak it. Yes. you got to be out there, preach the gospel. Amen. Right? This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. That's what the Bible says in the book of Joshua. I mean... Imagine, you're constantly, everything that comes out of your mouth is just speaking the word. Man, you gotta be bold. I mean, that also shows, you know, my final point, you're doing what the Bible says. You wanna be bold in God? Do what the Bible says. I mean, you're gonna read, you're gonna speak, and you're just gonna be doing it. James 1.22 says what? Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. Now you've heard. Now you have to go out and do it. The Bible says preach the word, preach the word. Amen. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Yes. Then abstain from all appearance of evil. Study to show thyself a prone to God. Then study. Yes. Then you have to do all those things. As you do things, what the Bible says, that means that you read, and you consider what you have read, and you consider how it can be applied in your Christian life, and you start doing it. Man, then when you start doing that, read, speak, and do it, man, you're going to have that boldness in God. Because you've got to be closer to God through the Word of God. And you've got to be closer to God because you're doing what He told you to do. Amen. Just like the little kid illustration. When the kid knows that saying thank you makes their parents happy, and then they do it over and over, 
It's like their second nature. I'm bold in my parents, so I say thank you to you. I'm bold in my God, so I'm going to preach the word. Yes. I'm bold in my God, that's I'm going to stand for truth. Amen. I'm bold in my God, I am not going to compromise in any way. I'm bold in my God, so no matter what happens in my life, I'm not going to fear man. I'm going to fear God. Amen. Think about the days in conclusion. All the days that you were coward. All the days that you fear man instead of God. Ask God to give you that boldness. Ask God to give you that courage and strength. So that just like 1 Thessalonians 2.2, 2, you can be bold in our God to speak unto the gospel of God even with much contention. Let's pray.